Okay, so we need to press the second statement. But are you seriously suggesting I colluded with these thugs to break into the place on the night of the murder? Hold it! Hold it! Have you seen these two men before? This pair? No, I don't associate with criminals. Uh, said by a man who introduced himself as Eggert Benedict. Bruh. I'd like to know who I have to thank for this. Who made this outlandish accusation against me? The young lawyer there in the black. This is a farce! <laughs> Whose idea was it to present? Whose idea was it to permit an outsider to work in a British court anyway? Uh, uh, Lul. Well, needless to say. I have no intention of admitting to such an outrageous accusation. Hold it! Hold it! Where were you at around 1 in the morning on the night in question, sir? That is past the hour at which I no would normally retire. Certainly. Oh, wait, did I skip? Okay, okay. Where were you at around 1 in the morning on the night in question, sir? That is past the hour at which I would normally retire. Certainly. I was not in the company of these two rapscallions <laughs> as they suspiciously look away. <laughs> You're able to prove that? Well, there goes 10 minutes wasted. Hey! <laughs> Shake it goes, Snorlax Dumper. Now we have Snorlax Dumper and Ectoro Shake It. You're able to prove that? Objection! Oh. Listen carefully, my learned Nipponese friend. For you... For you appear to be under a gross misapprehension on this point. What do you mean? The witness maintains he was not at the scene of the crime. He has no obligation to prove his absence. If your accusation is that the witness was present at the scene, the obligation lies with you to prove your assertion. You will fulfill that obligation before putting any more unreasonable questions to the witness. <laughs> My god, thank you. Seriously, appreciate you. Thanks, Wednesdays. <laughs> Kiss the homie! <laughs> A silent victory wiggle. Thanks. Even if certain parties here present claim that my blood was found at the scene... Hold it! Hold it! Blood was found at the scene of the crime. There's no question of that. Mr. Sholmes' chemical analysis has positive... has positive has positively identified the substance as such. But I am not the only human to have blood running through my veins, am I? Okay. How can you be sure that the blood is mine? It could equally be the blood of one of these two miscreants. Every individual's blood has a slightly different composition, it seems. Mr. Sholmes' chemical is able to differentiate- Spam me the science lesson! Who is this Sholmes character, anyway? Oh, I uh, assumed all Londoners would know the name. He's a gr- Well, a renowned detective. So, 
even you are unable to bring yourself to say, Great Detective. A great detective, you say? <laughs> now we're in the realm of fairy tales, are we? Oh, hold up. Something's going on here. Something's going on here. Time to pursue. Excuse me. Excuse me. Do you have something to say about that, Mr. Skulkin? Eh? Hey, what? Me? Uh, no, the Mr. Skulkin next to you. Right, I've had it up here. Right, I've had it up to here with this. How many times have I got to tell you? Yet, yeah, uh, yes, I know you're you're not big bruv skulky, sulky. Mr. Nash Skulkin. Uh, uh, call, call, call blimey! You what? Is it not the case that when Mr. Graydon just spoke, a thought went through your mind? Would you care to share that thought with the court? Eh? A thought? I don't have none of them. It must have been him. You what? Mr. Nash Skulkin, answer the question, please. What went through your mind when Mr. Graydon just spoke? N -n nothing Honest, Gov, nothing! I, 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 I was just thinking... If, if he waves his arm around like that much more, it'll open up the wound again, that's all! What wound? Where he took the bullet, of course! It was only two days ago! It ain't gonna be healed up yet! So, I, I was, um, uh, <laughs> well, you know, uh, I was worrying for him and, um, uh, <laughs> oh, uh, hell's bells. Mr. Graydon, did you hear that? What? Your comrade is worried about you, it seems. <laughs> On account of your injured arm. Oh, let's go. Eesh. <sighs> My lord. Yes, Mr. Graydon. I have no idea what these two wretches are talking about. Certainly, I shouldn't be expected to answer anything in relation to their... Mindless insinuations. <sighs> we know that someone other than the victim was hit by a bullet at the scene of the crime two nights ago. And from the height of the bullet hole and from the height of the bullet hole in the wall, that person was likely hit in the upper arm or thereabouts. Oh shit. <sighs> Perhaps you'd allow Perhaps you'd allow a court official to examine your arm, sir? The left arm that you're currently clasping with your right hand, as if in pain. Hmm. No. I refuse. <sighs> you have shown no evidence whatsoever that links me to these... Common thieves. Accordingly, I am not obliged to permit any such invasion of my privacy. Oh! As I've already said, I'm completely uninvolved in all this. I've never had anything to do with a pawnbrokery where this fellow was killed whatsoever. I take offense at the insinuation that I was in any way involved. Hmm. You claim to have had nothing whatsoever to do with Mr. Mid Windybank's pawn brokery. Hold up, I'm getting the phone call real quick.
We'll take it from Graydon's last line. You have shown no evidence whatsoever that links me to these common thieves. Accordingly, I am not, uh, I am not obliged to permit, to, to permit any such invasion of my privacy. As I've already said, I'm completely uninvolved in all of this. I've never had anything to do with the pawn brokery where this fellow was killed whatsoever. I take offense at the insinuation that I was in any way involved. Hmm. You claim to have had nothing whatsoever to do with Mr. Winniebank's pawn brokery. My lord, the defense would like that last statement to be added. The defense would like that last statement to be added to Mr. Graydon's formal testimony. Very well, counsel. Continue with your testimony, Mr. Graydon. <sighs> I'm going to give you a follow, Dan, to see your playthrough. Oh, yeah, dude, follow. Definitely give Dan anticipation a follow. One of my longtime friends here on this platform who I had the pleasure of meeting at TwitchCon 2018. Had some KBBQ together. Yeah, Dan's awesome, man. Definitely, definitely go follow him. Definitely go follow him up. Uh, is this the one that? Okay, so I think we need to press this fourth one. Some Scaramouche detectives' homebrew tincture can hardly be taken as serious evidence. Hold it! Hold it! Don't forget, sir, that Mr. Herlock Sholmes is the most famous detective in the world. <laughs> and the most famous detective in the world tells the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Hmm? Uh, uh, well... Uh... Oh no! I can't think how to answer that! I once saw the world's most famous swindler... I once saw the world's most famous swindler thrown into jail. He allegedly told the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but... But turned out... But, but turned out to be a pack of lies. Uh, uh, quite. Now, as you are no doubt aware, the Central Communication Station is the heart of this country's information network. My work there is of paramount importance, and you have kept me from it for long enough already. Trying to get out, are you? Sus. Appreciate it. Nowhere near as cool as Sam. No, you. But I'm definitely gonna pick. Uh, but I'm definitely gonna pick that up soon, since it was a blast. I yearn for the day we KBP Coon again, but romantically this time. <laughs> <laughs> Candlelit dinner. Beating each other's spaghetti like that one Disney movie. <laughs> With the two dogs. <laughs> okay, so this is the final statement. The bottom line is, I've never had anything to do with the pawnbroking establishment where the man was killed. Alright, replacing me. <laughs> XMH point leave. <laughs> XMH point arrive, get back here. <laughs> Hold it! Hold it! Never had anything to do with it? You forget that I was there, Mr. Graydon, on the very afternoon of the incident. Obviously, I am not a complete stranger to the pawnbrokers. I'm currently on the lookout for an armchair to finish my study. Objection! Objection! No! You were there to redeem an article. I have no idea what you're talking about. Ah. 
We got a little bit of an interjection from... Inspector Graydon! Source of the unlimited ass fries! Here at your service. Let's pursue, shall we? Excuse me! Excuse me! Do you have something to add, Inspector? Eh? Come again, sunshine! You were there too, in fact, weren't you, Inspector? That afternoon. Hmm. Well, yes, I, I do remember meeting yourself in the pawnbrokers that afternoon. You, your young Japanese assistant, and the accused were all present, as I recall. And at that time, this witness, Mr. Graydon, was trying to acquire a particular article. Um, well, uh, now... I'm afraid I don't remember too clearly. What? But, but you must! I'm not going to lie and pretend I remember something that I don't. What's going on here? Sam, are you a lady or the tramp? <laughs> The cool one, I don't know. <laughs> you get, get you again. <laughs> What's going on here? Rexy showed us a picture before, didn't he? You know, from the cameras that Hurley installed in Windybanks. Hmm, yes, of course. Both? Laugh my ass off, I ain't it. He's been munching on those. He's been munching those uh, some stale, droopy, salty fries for the longest, man. N no, Paula, they're actually the freshest of fries. He just has an unlimited source. Now I mean, he's straight up. He's like a potato magician, potatician. Great detective he is. If he can't remember something from the crime scene, I know, right? Wait, Nattles, I thought you were trying to avoid spoilers. <laughs> Grexy showed us a picture before, didn't he? You know, from the cameras that Hurley installed in Windybanks. Ah, yes, of course. Indeed. And the gentleman pictured bears a striking resemblance to the witness, I must say. Exactly, which proves that Mr. Graydon was in the shop on the afternoon in question. No point have I denied that fact. I merely entered the shop to peruse the articles on sale and have a word with the broker. Nothing more. No sense. I understand why Mr. Graydon might be trying to cover his tracks, but... Why would Gregson be trying to avoid giving testimony about what happened? Because he's colluding with Van Zeeks. That's why. He's the goddamn masterman behind all of this. That's all he's going to say on the matter, is it? What do you think, Bruno? I think he has no intention of telling us anything. He's well aware that the less he says, the less chance he has of giving himself away. Hmm... The complete opposite of Hurley, then. He seems to think that the more he says, the better. Well, at least I managed to... Well, at least I managed to prize a little more information from these witnesses' lips. All thanks to the Skulkin brothers. Yes! They were the key to it after all! So he says he had nothing to do with Windy Banks. Well, we know that's not true. 
Perhaps now would be a good time to have a proper look through the court record. Hmm. Good idea. You never know what tiny scrap of information could become a valuable weapon. A little spoiler isn't too bad. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, hey, whenever you get around to it, Nattles, I hope you enjoy it, man. This is a great game. And I definitely, like, I want to play the second game in the series, but I'm just, I'm still not sure if I'm going to hop into it right away. Okay, I'm turning on story mode to see which statement we need to present something. Oh, is it this last one? Objection. Ah, presenting the music, music box disc. Have you ever seen this disc before, Mr. Graydon? <laughs> Why? Is it supposed to mean something? This disc was until the day of his murder in pawn in Mr. Winnie Banks' shop. It was redeemed by the defendant, Miss Gina Lestra, that afternoon. However, somebody mysteriously appeared to try to take it from her. And that somebody was you, of course. Wasn't it, Mr. Graydon? Oh! As I have reiterated numerous times now, you are mistaken. That was not me. I've never seen that disc before in my life. It may have escaped your notice, but there is a small smear of blood on the disc. Ah, oh, yes! Resulting from an abrasion of the thumb, perhaps? That's right. The surface of the disc is covered in hundreds of tiny metal bumps. In the skirmish to acquire the disc, the thumb of the person who tried to take it suffered minor lacerations. <laughs> so, while the disc bears the remnants of that skirmish in the form of the smear of blood. The thumb of the person in question must bear the remnants also in the form of a scratch. Oh, 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 oh. good gracious! Indeed, it must! Mr. Graydon. <sighs> you refuse to allow a court officer to examine your arm before. Are you now going to refuse to allow us to examine your thumb? Because I have no doubt that it bears a small scratch consistent with the smear of blood on this disc. <laughs> hmm. Well, uh... Well... It would seem I underestimated you. Oh. Oh. A new subscriber arrives. It fills you with determination. What is the meaning of this? <laughs> so you admit it now. You admit you have a scratch on your thumb from when you attempted to take the disc from the defendant? Oh shit, let's go chat, let's go. Order, order! Well... Mr. Graydon! <laughs> it would appear there has been something of a misunderstanding here. I did not attempt to take the disc as you put it. No, quite the reverse. What are you trying to say? <laughs> it's really quite simple, you see. The disc was mine from the outset. 
Okay. Okay. Fucking this guy, dude. Sup, nerds. What up, RWG? Welcome back, bro. Cheers, man. You just get off of work, mate? Welcome back, you legend. Is there some crime in taking an item that you own out of pawn? What? It would seem, Mr. Graydon, that in this piece of evidence, my learned friend has established a link between yourself and the incident. Accordingly, you will tell the court everything you know about this disc now. As you wish. Though, I'm quite sure it has nothing whatsoever to do with the pawnbroker's murder. We'll see about that, buddy. Witness testimony. A disc. Yep, just got home for show, for show. Welcome home, welcome home. Mr. Sam Keyfield, Mr. Sam Keyfield, Mr. Sam Keyfield, Mr. Sam Keyfield. This guy, I know, right? Trying to cover his tract. Fucking on to you, Mr. Graydon. I was up on a roof when you went live. Oh, for sure. Good thing you didn't check your phone. I don't want you being like, whoa, whoa. Ah! <laughs> Yeah, welcome home, dude. Hope work went well today. There's a note on the disc saying, for McGilded, but the item belongs to me. Lul. The redemption ticket was stolen from me by the accused, that filthy gutterling on the day in question. I proceeded at once to the shop in order to explain my situation and ready my article. In the end, of course, the disc was taken by the police. In other words, I had absolutely no reason to break into the shop later that same night. Hmm. Did I hear you correctly, sir? McGill did, you say? The famous London philanthropist? Who perished in this very courtroom two months ago after being acquitted of a distinctly messy murder? Yes, my lord. The one in the same. Oh, oh good lord! Mr. Graydon! Are you saying that Mr. McGilded and yourself were acquainted? Hmm. Yes, that's correct. Whoa! Oh, dead. I did check my phone actually. I was on my phone. God damn it! Not when you're on the roof. I was waiting for the prey to come by so I could uh, turn on some snow machines on top of the roof. Definitely consider watching the stream for a minute. Lol. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> Don't get fired. <laughs> Parade? Give me some deets. Christmas parade? Already? It's not even December yet. Order! Hmm. Well, I certainly didn't expect to hear that name uttered here in my courtroom again. According to what Gina told us, this disc was placed in pawn on that fateful night two months ago. McGilded himself gave instructions to deposit it at Windy Banks. It's funny that Mr. Graydon here is claiming the disc belongs to him then, isn't it? In all, likely, in all likelihood, he's lying. So he appeared that afternoon at Windy Banks in order to get his hands on McGilded's disc for some reason. Counsel, you will commence your cross-examination, please. Cross-examination. A disc. There 
there's a note on the disc saying, Bob McGilded, but the item belongs to me. Hold it! Hold it! Would you care to explain how this belongs to you? We have a big Christmas parade. Our Christmas event just opened on, oh, just opened on Friday. The whole park is decked the fuck out in lights. Millions of them. I can post a pic of my rooftop view in the Discord. Yeah, dude. Christmas in November? Such blasphemy. <laughs> Agreed. I've been working on Christmas since July and was working on Halloween in May. Sheesh. Yeah, feel free to drop that in the Discord. I'll check it out later. Would you care to explain how this belongs to you? As you will observe, a communications officer such as myself commands a fine salary. You are, uh, certainly exquisitely dressed, sir. So, you see, I have little need to make use of the services provided by the pawn brokery trade. However, I did once find myself in difficulties having misplaced my purse whilst on an errand. Which is why I pawned my fine black overcoat to the, to the broker in question. You claim that was your overcoat? Obviously. And in my haste, I clean forgot that the music box disc was in its pocket. Okay, sure thing, dude. And yet, there is a note on it that reads, For McGilded. I am a collector of rare and unusual music box music. I first met Mr. McGilded at a gentleman's club in the city and was interested to discover that he shared my penchant in that area. So, the, the disc in question... It's a... It's a... Pre... It's a pre-production sample. I promise to let Mr. McGill did hear it. Hmm. But then you forgot that it was in the pocket of the overcoat you were forced upon. Yes, exactly. Gina didn't mention any of that in her testimony two months ago, did she? No, because McGilded had threatened her to keep her mouth shut. Which means that if we dig too deeply here, it's going to expose Gina's perjury. Uh, oh dear! This is complicated, isn't it? Let's leave it alone for the time being. Posted? Alright, for sure. I will check that later. Never thought I'd hear a dude say he lost his purse. <laughs> The redemption ticket was stolen from me by the accused. That filthy gutterling on the day in question. Alright, so let's press this second Hold statement. It. Hold it. So you're saying that Miss Lestrade lifted the ticket from your pocket? So you're saying that Miss Lestrade lifted the ticket from your pack from your pocket or bag? That's right. Despite being mindful of danger when walking in the insalubrious areas, her kind frequent. Objection! Objection! Miss Lestrade did no such thing. Well, of course you would take that stance. But the girl is a regular offender. You came to the pawn brokery that day prepared with all the information you needed to identify the defendant. You were looking for her. That's what brought you to Windy Banks. To get your hands on McGill on to get your hands on Mr. McGilded's disc. Objection! My learned friend is a veritable 
font of nonsense. Uh, 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 nonsense? I concur with the prosecution. Counsel, you will refrain from conjecturing in this way. Is that clear? Uh, uh. Yes, my lord. <laughs> then, I will continue with my testimony for what possible use it can be. This little shit. Yeah, thanks again for the raid, Piano Man. Uh, okay, statement number three. I proceeded at once to the shop in order to explain my situation and redeem my article. Hold it! Hold it! Had you ever been to Winnie Banks before? Only once for the purposes of pawning something. But like many, I enjoy browsing in such establishments. So, when you noticed that the pickpocket had taken your ticket, you chased after her. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. I didn't notice at first, of course. Such is the art of the pickpurse. But when I did, I headed to the pawn brokery at once. Lul. In order to reclaim my coat before the thief could. I was merely trying to recover what was rightfully mine in the first place. <sighs> he can say what he likes because he knows we have no evidence to contradict him on this. Bastard! In the end, of course, the disc was taken by the police. Hold it! Hold it! Yes. It was taken by Inspector Gregson here, wasn't it? That's right. This was the very man. Apparently, the police are collecting that anything right? that has a connection to Mr. McGilded as evidence. Oh? Huh? Pursue! Excuse me! Excuse me, mate. Excuse me. Is something wrong, Inspector? <coughs> um, well, uh... <laughs> what do you mean? The last remark Mr. Graydon made in his testimony seemed to trouble you in some way. Uh, uh, no, no, it didn't. It's, um, it's nothing. Leave it alone. Right. Let me ask you this, Inspector. Oh, and Paula, I just, I just, okay, I connected it. Your favorite one is, that's a huge bitch. <laughs> Why is Scotland Yard gathering Mr. McGilded's possessions? <sighs> I can't tell you something like that, sunshine. Whoa, whoa, take it easy on your fries. What is it, Inspector? Investigative secrets? It, uh, yes, it, exactly. You should know all about that. It'll be here tomorrow. Gonna post a pic as soon as it's set up. Oh, yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. Dude. Ultra wide monitor hype. Yeah, one of my, uh, one of my homies has one of those. They look pretty slick. I was wondering if you get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nah, nah, it took took me a little moment there. <laughs> yes, exactly. You should know all about that. Magnus McGilded, who died so unexpectedly after his trial two months ago. A man renowned throughout the capital for his great contributions to public life. Yet, he had a dark side too. <laughs> Where are you going with this, Venzix? I suppose the police are dealing with the aftermath of his nefarious activities, are they? Uh. <laughs> 
bouncing off. <laughs> Coppers like me have duties to carry out to carry out that we're not at liberty to talk about. That's all you need to know. <laughs> Facial expression, dude. Duties conferred by Lord Strongheart, I presume. The Lord Chief Justice appears to have great faith in you, Inspector. <laughs> the bottom line is, if you want to get more out of me, you're gonna need Lord Strongheart's paw print first. What's all this about? It's like there's something going on between Gregson and Lord Van Zeeks here. Well, it would appear that the inspector has revealed all he is at liberty to reveal. Mr. Graydon, let us return to your testimony. Gladly, my lord. Don't forget anime noises! <coughs> <laughs> Gotta have him, Vega. Thanks for still hanging out. It's been a long day and I'm struggling to stay awake now. Really nice to wake up to Sam and fall asleep to Sam. Sick again, sick you love. Have a great one, everyone. Good night, and good. Love your face. Sleep well, you damn beauty. This disc was deposited. This disc was deposited at Windy Banks on Magnus. This disc was deposited at Windy Banks on Magnus McGilded's instructions. You knew that, and you went there with the intention of obtaining it for yourself. Objection. Conjecture again. And in any case, the disc was taken into custody by the police that afternoon. The witness had no reason to visit the pawn brokery again that night. Objection! Objection! Sorry, my learned friend, but that's not true. I'll try to be here as much as I can. I just do stuff on the side and have you with me. Aw, thanks, Vega. Appreciate it. Hope your Sunday is going well. <laughs> look, 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 look at that smirk on fucking Ryunosuke's face, man. He's just like, nah, bitch. Nah, homie. Not tonight. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> what? Mr. McGilded had another article in Pawn at Windy Banks. As this second pawnbroker's ticket proves. <laughs> there were two articles belonging to Mr. McGilded in Windy Banks Pawnbrokery. And the reason you broke into the shop that night was to recover the second one. Together with your two accomplices, the Skulkin Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Hmm. This is the second ticket, is it? What had the man deposited? The article description reads One small box. Uh, a rather vague description, it seems to me. Are you suggesting that I broke into the pond brokery with these. <laughs> Clowns! In order to steal some trinket box? I believe there are adequate grounds to suspect that you did. This is absurd! Why on earth would I do such a thing? Once the article had been forfeited, I could simply walk into the shop and purchase it! There would be absolutely no need for me to resort to theft! Uh, 
That's a good point. Hmm. Indeed. The witness makes a solid argument. So that means that for some reason, this Graydon fellow needed the small box that very night, does it? Objection! It's time to put an end to this nonsense, my lord. Uh, could you be a little less cryptic, Lord Renzix? I do hate to ruin my learned friend's argument, but the truth is quite incontrovertible. On the night in question, no small box was taken from Winniebank's pawn brokery. And, rest assured, the prosecution can prove it. Whoa! The... What? Good gracious! Inspector! Show the photographic prints to the court, if you please. <clears throat> yes, sir! What prints? These prints were taken from one of the detective's security cameras. Ah! Early's red-handed recorders again! As previously explained, using this plan of the shop layout, the victim's establishment was furnished with automatic cameras in two locations. One was set to capture the counter where Mr. Winniebank received his customers, and the other was set to capture the shelves on which articles were placed for sale once forfeited. According to the information on this ticket, the gilded small box has been forfeited already. Had been forfeited already. Two days before the incident at 9pm on 13th April to be precise. Which means it would have been on the shelves of forfeited items in the shop front. Now, what I have here is a print taken by one of the cameras about two hours before the incident. That's at 11pm on 15th April. The victim certainly had a very full shop, it would appear. And then here we have another print. This one was taken about two hours after the incident. I see. So we have two pictures to compare. Though, I must say that placing them side by side leaves me cold. Dear me, that's starting to make my headache. Obviously, at Scotland Yard, we consider theft as one possible motive in this case. We explored the possibility that something had been taken in addition to the victim's life. So, your men have already come had these two prints thoroughly, Inspector. Yes, sir. We counted every single item in each of these two photographic prints. And the Yard's conclusion is that exactly the same number are present in both. Hmm. In other words, Nothing was taken from the pawn brokery on the night in question. And my learned friend's assertion is nothing more than a hopeful fantasy. Ah! I don't believe it. If I could have just shown that he'd stolen McGilded's pawn box... I might have been able to break him down at last! His fucking movements, he's like, 
But you got nothing on me, bitch. You've got nothing. It's like, how is that not sus? He's like, that's right, bitch. <laughs> Gamble 10%. Par par one 10%. <laughs> Gamble all. Vega went all in and won. Hype. Lul. They hit dance. I know, right? It's just like, I'm going to make it in time for key. You better work, bitch. You better work. <laughs> Did he just sway his hips as a taunt at you? Yeah, dude. Just like, mmm. <laughs> I love the characters in these games, dude. <laughs> you know what, Bruno? I've been thinking. Daddy, chill. Definitely, Paula. Do you like this new redemption? It seems to be a favorite in the chat. Daddy, chill. <laughs> it's so oh, good, dude. That was nuts. Oh! Sorry. Paula, you legend. Same. The characters are so dramatic. I love them all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 100, 100%. I wonder if these photographs, two photographs are exactly the same. What? So, Council, in the light of the evidence put forward by the prosecution, what is your position? It seems that, in fact, on the night in question, nothing was stolen from the victim's establishment. Do you accept the prosecution's assertion? there be some hidden discrepancy in these two photographic prints somewhere? I love it, Sam! <laughs> Daddy, chill! <laughs> it can be used in so many situations. Like, yeah, those are my favorite redemptions, where you guys can use it. Whether it's responding to me saying something or to the game, and so yeah, Daddy Chill, very versatile. <laughs> Before I give my answer, my lord, I'd like to try something, if I may. Uh, try something? What do you mean, Council? I'll need to use a certain piece of evidence from the court record to identify the discrepancy. Hmm. Uh, I'm not entirely sure I follow. Which piece of evidence do you intend to use to help you identify a discrepancy between, between the two prints? I'd like to use this device, my lord. To view the two prints stereoscopically. Ooh! Yes! You've caught the bug at last! You can't resist it, can you? <laughs> Alright. Juror number three. Juror number three. Daddy, chill. <laughs> Oh man, I gotta hotkey this to my stream deck, dude. <laughs> oh my god. Parpar says, These characters are all of Sam's different personalities alive in video game form, Kappa. <laughs> hey, Parpar, don't tell everyone. You just shut your goddamn mouth. <laughs> Luis, welcome back, dude. <laughs> Cheers, man. He's like, oh my god, you got the bug. It's oh my god.
<laughs> Louise. Good to see you, man. Hope you're having a fantastic night, mate. Jeez. Yes, you've caught the bug at last. You can't resist it, can you? <laughs> you've got the cross-eyed compulsion. Juror number three. What a surprise. Not really. Come on, Runo. Let's put the pictures in place and see what this wonderful contraption shows us. All right, all right. I just needed to calm down Juror three. Curly, like, his, his nipples are very hard right now. Good to see you, Luis. How you doing tonight, man? Daddy Zeke's is not chill right now. <laughs> <laughs> Juror number three. Oh, you! Oh, you! Uh, there we go. Now look through the eyepiece. <gasps> I wasn't sure at first, but... There is a clear discrepancy between these two prints! <laughs> what? You must identify the location in question for the court counsel. Indicate the precise location of the discrepancy of which you speak. Granted, these two prints are almost identical. However, there is one minor discrepancy between them. Ugh. What? Yo, yo, take it easy on your fries, bro. What? What? What did those wedges ever do to you? Gregson, chill. When you view the two pictures stereoscopically, Daddy, chill. Thank you. Thank you, Vega. <laughs> I'm doing great, Luis. Glad to hear you're doing good. Always a pleasure to have you back here in the stream, dude. Coming at, right at, coming at the, the right point, dude. Right when we're about to fucking, we're about to blow this case wide open. Juror number three should not get up right now. Stay behind that table, man. I know, right? He's pitching a tent. <laughs> When you view the two pictures stereoscopically, a single area stands out as being different. The location of this small box. Let me... <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Unbelievable. Dude. Uh, oh, oh, by Jove, you're right. How extraordinary. <laughs> oh, no, I forget he he dies. <laughs> Welcome back, Tugi. And after seeing that, <laughs> oh, all right. Oh, all right. Oh, oh no, it's stuck. Oh, oh no, I think I broke it. <laughs> oh, oh no, I broke it, dude. <laughs> it doesn't reset. <laughs> <laughs> 